We're going to start off by talking about seasons. What is your favorite season? Summer is my favorite season, but not for the whole year. So I like four seasons. But um, I like I like summer because of the sun, because of the vitamins we have. Yeah, name. yeah summer <laughs> mainly. Tell me about the different seasons in your country. We have four seasons. But my favorite is the summer, as I mentioned, uh, because in Beirut, it's, lot, it's not like too hot. And uh, if you feel hot, you go to the mountains. So you feel like uh, it's different in Beirut, the seasons. Uh, I like winter in Beirut. We go uh, ski and uh, we have many activities to do. We're not stuck at home. It's not like minus 20. So it's, um, it's nice. Is tourism popular in a particular season in your country? The tourism in Beirut is uh, is high in uh, summer and uh, in Christmas. All the people come, you know, it's like the, our country is uh, more about family. And uh, so they come to Beirut to see the family, to spend the holidays and um, to have time with the parents. Let's talk about sports. Do you play any sports? Uh, I used to play uh, wakeboard, snowboard, uh, horse riding. And I had to stop because of the kids. I'm afraid, I mean, something will happen, God forbid. And um, I'm, I'm planning now to go back to my <laughs> hobbies. Do you watch any sports on TV? No, I'm not a fan <laughs> of sports, but I like to do sports. And I like to, my kids to do sports. So I started the gymnastics for my son uh, last year. He was like two, he was too young for the gymnastics, but I, I like I like seeing him uh, active, not sitting and uh, watching TV and uh, on the iPad. So, yeah. <laughs> what sport did you play as a child in school? Gymnastics. I love gymnastics. And for me, gymnastics is the base for all the, for whatever you want to do in your life. The base is gymnastics. Let's talk about travel. Where was the last place you visited on holiday? Greece. Uh, actually, we go to Greece every summer and um, I love Greece. It's like uh, similar to Beirut, but more advanced in a way. More, not more civilized, but um, I love Greece. I love the vibes, the islands they have, the people, the food there is uh, amazing. I love Italy, um, Romania, Europe in general. I love Europe. Where would you like to go back again on holiday? Beirut. <laughs> Actually, we're going uh, in Christmas. We're going to spend Christmas in London, but I'm excited for Beirut. Now let's talk about TV. Do you enjoy watching TV? Yes. Uh, actually, I love uh, watching TV at night because uh, I put the kids to sleep and I feel like this is my time with my husband. So like two, three hours before going back to sleep. And uh, I feel like it's our quality time sitting together, watching a movie, a documentary, series. What kind of TV programs do you most enjoy watching? Uh, I love Netflix. Yeah, and you have the, all the options you want. If you want to watch a series or a documentary, or you have plenty of uh, choices. <laughs> what was your favorite TV show when you were a child? Um, when I was a child, I used to play uh, outside with my neighbors. So uh, we used to spend time playing more than watching TV. But uh, we used to watch like, you know, the um, kids show at 5 a.m. <laughs> before school. And that's it. When we come back from school, we run directly to the street. <laughs> so describe a TV documentary you watched that you enjoyed. The last one I watched, it was about um, the most country, the population in this country who lived the um, longer than the other countries. Why I watched this documentary? Because when I have kids, back to the kids, when I had the, the first baby, I decided to change my lifestyle, to stop eating bad food, to stop eating junk food, to change everything. So when I saw this documentary, I felt like I have, it's a must, I have to watch this documentary and to see why this population or this country, they live longer than the other countries. And uh, mainly it's, it was like um, because of the food, the organic food. They don't go to the gym, but they walk a lot. They, they don't sit like doing nothing. No, they are always active. So uh, I learned a lot 
while watching this documentary because my husband used to make fun of me. Okay, why you are using buckwheat flour instead of the the normal flour? When I watched this documentary, I've got the answer. And I told him, look, when when you eat this flour instead of this, it will help you. It will help your blood not to, um, how to say it, to absorb the sugar. So this is the difference between this and this. That's why in Italy, if you realize that the the, the their food is based on carbs, why they are not uh, fat or why they are not like uh, <laughs> sumo because uh, of the good uh, ingredients they use and the quality of food they, they have. So, uh, yeah. That's the and, end of the two minutes. So we've been talking about a TV documentary and we're going to continue to talk about TV and specifically TV advertising. What type of products are most advertised on TV in your country? To thank you for watching this video, I want to give you a free course that has helped thousands of students improve their IELTS speaking score. What it's going to do is take you through every single part of the test and give you strategies for part one, part two and part three and also allow you to practice at home for free and get feedback. To sign up for that for free, all you have to do is just click the link in the description. Thanks very much and let's get back to the video. Uh, so mainly the food. They do a lot of commercials uh, about food, cheese, uh, fries, yeah, food. Do you think that people pay attention to adverts on TV? Yeah, of course they do. Because it's, uh, it's not like an ad you can skip. You have to watch, otherwise you put mute, but you are still watching. Even if you mute the TV, you are still watching and seeing the product name, and the product itself. How important are regulations on TV advertising? So important, especially for the young generation. You know what's happening now and uh, the brainwash, the kids they are going through and uh, the things we're not used to see and we're not used to think about, now we are seeing everywhere in the cartoons and the like we say, um, under the table, the message is like, uh, yeah. So what I'm going to do now is give you some feedback. Um, you did very, very well, but there's always room for improvement. So I'm not criticizing you or anything like that. I'm just trying to help you get the best mark possible. So I'm going to give you feedback on part one, part two, and part three. And then we'll talk about your pronunciation, your fluency, okay. your grammar, your vocabulary, okay. all of those things. To thank you for making it this far in the video, I want to give you 10% off our VIP course. The IELTS VIP course is the most successful IELTS course in the world. That is a fact because we have more band 7, 8 and 9 success stories than any other IELTS course in the entire world. We do that by simplifying the whole IELTS process, supporting you with some of the best IELTS teachers in the world and being with you every step of the way until you get the score that you need. All you have to do is just look down in the description, just click that and you can sign up. If you have any questions about the VIP course, always feel free to get in touch with us. We answer 100% of the questions that we get. Hope that you have become a VIP. If not, enjoy the rest of this free video. So part one, um, you did very, very well. Um, one thing that you did particularly well was you really developed your answers um, and you were very fluent. So you had no problem talking mm. about those things. One thing that you do that could become a problem, I don't think it is a problem, is that you tend to answer the question and then you will go off and speak about things related to that question, but kind kind of adjacent to that topic, okay. you know? So you're going off and talking about your children related mm. to that rather than really sticking to the question. Okay. So you get a mark for, it's called coherence, which means did you answer the question and really develop the answer related to that question. So you didn't do it that much, but sometimes you went off and yeah. talked about, about things, which is okay, but we want to help you get the, the highest mark, okay. mark possible. With part two, you had no problem speaking for two minutes. Most students find it very difficult to speak for two minutes. You don't have any problem at all speaking for two minutes about that. Just be careful at again, you stick to the topic. It was describe a TV documentary and you talked 
a lot about you and your husband and his health and mm. why that food is healthy. That's okay because it's related to that topic. Mm. So in the way that you did it was probably fine. But the question is describe a documentary. So you should really, really focus on that. The only weakness that you have is really sticking to and answering the actual question. Okay. So you can use examples from your own life. You know, for example, my husband, we started using buckwheat in the mm. pasta and that really helped him. And then go back to the documentary. Mm. If you did the test for real, you might be under pressure. You might be stressed out. Mm. And when people are stressed out, they're not thinking clearly. And then you might start yeah. talking about things that are not really related okay. to the question. Part three, um, you did develop your answers but you should try to maybe use a little bit more development. Use things like explaining why you think that mm -hmm. or giving examples will help you develop it a little bit more. Again, sometimes you kind of went off on a tangent. A good way to think about the questions is maybe for, ev for most of these part three questions, there's a, uh, not all of them, but most of them, there's like most things, uh, this side and this side. Mm -hmm. All right. So if you want to think more clearly about these questions, it would be, well, some people think this. Here's why they think that. Some people think this. Here's why they think that. Mm. I personally believe this. So, for example, how important are regulations on TV? So some people think that there shouldn't be any regulations, maybe because they're advertisers and they want mm. to sell more stuff. Other people think that they should be heavily regulated because of children, you know, yeah. children should not be exposed to certain exactly. things through advertising. Personally, I'm a parent, so mm. I think that there should be regulations, especially uh, before 9 p.m. Nowadays, we have yeah. uh, to double them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you can see how I give a more mm. in-depth, more balanced view, especially the mm. last question. It was kind of like you were talking as you were thinking. It's better to take a few seconds and think, you know, you don't have to immediately give an answer, yeah. but think, like, okay, why do people think this? Why do people think that? And then you can, you can give the answer. Okay. So <laughs> that, that, that would help. Thank but you. overall, excellent. Like really, really, Thank really, so really much. well done. <laughs> so let me give you some feedback on pronunciation, fluency, grammar, and, okay. and vocabulary. For pronunciation, the examiner will be thinking, can I understand everything that she says? And they will he or she listening to you will be able to understand 100% of what you're saying. So you'll get a very high mark for pronunciation. You do have a, a Lebanese accent and that yeah. should be, you should be very proud of that. <laughs> a lot of people think that getting a high mark for pronunciation means sounding British or American or Australian. Mm -hmm. That's not what it's about at all. Um, some of the best students in the world have very strong accents, but it's not about speaking with a British accent, it's about using your own accent to um, speak as clearly as possible. And you mm. do an excellent Thank job with that. So you would get a very high high score uh, for your pronunciation. It's very, really? very good. Yes. And you also use intonation very well. So your voice going up, your voice going down yeah. <laughs> to show meaning. Um, you do that very well. Um, so overall, your pronunciation is, is a very, very, very high Thank standard. You. So, uh, just to go back to accent, the only time accent would cause a problem is if your accent is so thick that it causes problems for the the listener and yours mm. yours when is you not. don't understand when i'm saying right? exactly and, and as i said i'm sitting with you talking and mm. there's not one word that mm. i don't understand so yeah <laughs> it's very very good we move on to fluency and coherence so fluency and coherence is one one band fluency means speaking normally without pausing or hesitating or repetition mm. you have no problem with that in general but we'll, we'll come back to that in a second coherence is your main issue so coherence is did you answer the question so yeah. sometimes you go Show off <laughs> on, a, on a you remind me of my sister my sister can speak for days <laughs> and she you ask her about one thing and she ends up Actually, talking about uh, you're something right because completely. i forgot that we have the time and i'm like uh, yeah 
I mean, under normal, like when I'm speaking to my sister, I would never criticize her about yeah. her speaking level. But remember, this is a test. So with, and, no, it's and, nice and to test, hear. It's, so. I'm, I'm happy to hear this. <laughs> so it's not a criticism. It's just, but remember, they're, they're testing that. So you would maybe get a lower mark for coherence. Mm -hmm. um, and then fluency, um, especially towards the end, because you were trying to think of the correct answer. Mm -hmm. It's a speaking test, so there's no correct answer. Any answer is is acceptable. They're not testing your um, your knowledge of the mm. of the topic or your IQ. They're just using these general topics yeah. so that anyone can talk about them. That's why they ask you about questions that anyone in Lebanon or Vietnam mm. or South Africa or yeah. any country in the world will know about these yeah. topics. So <laughs> you don't have to be an expert in them. In part three, if you get a difficult topic, feel free to say, I don't know much about this, but here's my guess. Yeah. Do you know, and throw, throw out that. Just keep talking and, that, and that's mm. absolutely fine. And then at the end, you, can, you, you didn't know the right word because that sometimes happens even, you know, even myself when I'm speaking, I'm like, my mind has gone blank. I can't. Yeah, even in Arabic, sometimes I yeah. don't know. What yeah. Was the, uh, what is that I word? I to say, yeah, what yeah. was the, yeah, exactly. So if that happens in, in the test, all you have to do is say to the examiner, um, I'm thinking of this word, I can't think of the exact one, but it means this, mm. or paraphrase it, the, the, this, and that that's absolutely fine, because that happens in normal, like yeah. when you're speaking Arabic, <laughs> exactly. when I'm speaking English. I do it when I'm teaching <laughs> all the time, because they're, they're not looking for the perfect answer, they're looking for... If you move to London or Canada or New York City and you got a job in one of those, in a company there, would you be able to communicate with those people? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and, and that's what really they're testing. For grammar, your grammar is excellent. Very, very good. Very, very accurate. You do make certain little slips like this one, for example. But these are just little slips. You're not making them all the time. All right. So 90% of your sentences have no errors in them, no grammatical errors. You do make little slips, but none of those slips stop me understanding what you're saying. Oh. So if you were making grammar mistakes where I'm like, what What does she mean? Like, I don't know what she <laughs> means. Then that would be an issue. But because your slips are minor and not frequent at all, you would get a very high score for, for grammar. So your grammar is very, oh. very good. Perfect. Same with your vocabulary. Your vocabulary is of a very high standard, such as this. So you can see that you use very good topic-specific vocabulary and also very idiomatic um, vocabulary. So this is vocabulary that native English speakers would use, mm -hmm. that learner generally learners wouldn't be able to use. So that demonstrates that you've got a very high level of vocabulary. Thank so you. overall, you would get a high score except for coherence and fluency. Yeah. That's what you should work on. Yeah. And we'd like to invite, <laughs> invite you back and we can do another one okay. and we can see if you get the top score. Thank Sound you. Good? <laughs> yeah. All right, good.